them out to celebrate. Celebrate the second quarter of the frenzy starting with your Catholic heading over to Delone Catholic. How about an aerial show from the Squires to get us going? Brady Dettenburn pointing out that Levi Hohenstein is wide open. Denver Ostrom hits him. Hohenstein makes the cut back and is into the end zone. As you'd imagine, the home crowd really enjoying that one. Squires next drive. Dettenburn, he's not pointing to anyone this time. He's taking care of business himself. Delone Catholic starts to pull away in this one. Gage Zimmerman, though, liked the look of that and thought it was fun. So uh, he's going to try it out for himself. He'll do it by heading right at the York Catholic defense. Squires just handle the Irish. 42 to 6. It has not only been a historic season for East Penn, it's been a good one. Evan Brooks was in Enola tonight as the Panthers host Mechanicsburg. Alex, it's hard to believe that there's only one team with a perfect mid Penn Colonial Conference record, and that team is the East Pennsboro Panthers. The midway point of the season is where you find out what your team is all about. There are six teams that are only a game behind East Penn in the standings, and one of them is Coach Rose's Wildcats. Homecoming night at East Pennsboro for the Panthers as they welcome in Mechanicsburg. The Wildcats pull out all the stops early. Josh Smith looks like he's going to punt, but decides to tuck and run and barrels his way through for the Wildcats first down, but their drive would stall right there. The Panthers take over for their per first possession. Keith Oates drops back to pass and finds his man Ali Alimi streaking down the sideline wide open as he takes it into Wildcat territory. The student section is telling them to keep it up on this homecoming night. Alami would finish off the drive himself and put the Panthers up three with that field goal. Next possession, East Penn in the red zone, and Paul Sanderson punches it in from three yards out as East Penn improves to 6-0 with a 29-16 victory. We'll stay on the West Shore and move over to West Shore Stadium for Hershey and Redland. Pick it up in the second half. Redland QB Quinlan Sharir looks deep, but his pass is tipped and picked by Cam Sweeney to set up good field position on the ensuing Hershey possession. Angel Cabrera gets the handoff and gets busy, breaks through the entire Patriots defense, dragging defenders and all, and finds pay dirt for the score. The Trojans would have it going all night. Watch this as Sweeney airs it out for his receiver, Derek Guzman, who makes the insane grab in the end zone. Wow. The ref signals touchdown. The Trojans offense would complete the shutout in the fourth quarter. Davon Williamson takes the handoff, makes a nice cut, and strolls into the end zone as Hershey pitches their first shutout of the season and gets the victory 41-0, the final. We have a theme for each week. Um, last week it was take care of the details. That's something we got to continue doing week after week uh, just to get better. We're proud of these kids and, and the energy and the enthusiasm they play with. So, you know, it's football. Friday night, something to be excited about, so we're just going to keep building on that. Yeah, the Trojans take on their toughest test yet next week as they welcome in last year's for a state champion, Bishop McDevitt Crusaders. As we wrap up things on the West Shore, we're heading further west where Ryan Yee makes stops at Greencastle Antrim and Waynesboro for a pair of Colonial Conference games. It's a homecoming kind of night as the Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils welcome in the Northern York Polar Bears. We start in the first quarter after a quick turnover touchdown to put the Blue Devils up by seven early. The Polar Bears look to respond following kickoff received by Magarin Mackey. He takes it up the field, changes direction, and brings it out past the 50-yard line for great Northern starting field position. Same drive, Polar Bears march all the way down the field, find themselves within the five, hand off to Cole Bartram who says, get off me, trucks his way to the end zone. Northern ties it up at six. Seven. Fast track to the second quarter, still tied. Blue Devils have it at the 40, and how about a little hook and ladder play? Pass to Carter McCauley, offload to running back Xavier Ramsey. He takes it to the house for the touchdown, 14-7 to in favor of the Blue Devils, and they wouldn't look back. Greencastle Antrim takes it in the end, 24-12. to We stick in the mid-pen Colonial Division, where Waynesboro takes on Susquehanna Township at home. Both teams coming off big wins. Both teams 1-1 one one in conference play, but tonight, those similarities change. Got to honor the homecoming queen and a special homecoming king first at the halftime break. Second half, Waynesboro up 21 to 12. Susquehanna Township's first drive of the third quarter, passed by Torn Evans, finds Jarrett Kearns, who turns the corner and gets the end zone untouched lead cut down to two. Susquehanna Township now up by one after a block punt safety and the offense keeps on putting on. Evans again finds a wide open receiver in Jaden Washington for the score. Township extends the lead 28 to 21. The Waynesboro defense trying to spark some life. Evan gets the 
ball to Josh Nengeit, works his way to the goal line. Susquehanna thinks they have the touchdown, but the ball comes loose. It would be ruled that Waynesboro recovers to keep things close. However, it would not be enough. Township keeps on rolling. They take it in the end, 40 to 21. Coach Heaton, how about the second half comeback as a confidence builder for your team? We keep telling our kids we're two plays away from being undefeated, and that's big. So each week we take the mentality of, yeah, we have an opponent, opponent, but it has to be about us. So as long as we continue to think it's about us and be 1-0 at the end of the week, well, this thing can go for a nice little ride. And that's a wrap in the mid-Penn Colonial Division on an exciting homecoming night of football. Thanks, Ryan. When the frenzy returns, Central York wants to remain among the unbeaten in the game that you could have watched on Fox 43.2. We'll be right back.